Good morning, friends. We're going to be talking about some recent favorites of mine in today's vlog. Uh, we're doing this a little bit differently because this past month or so has been pretty different for me because I was traveling for two weeks, uh, which is why I'm not posting this, you know, right at the beginning of February and calling this my January favorites like I usually do. So we're doing this a little bit differently. Um, I do have some beauty favorites, but I have a lot of lifestyle favorites as well because I learned a lot of things. <laughs> about myself <laughs> and what I liked on this trip that I took uh, the past couple of weeks. So um, some of these things are gonna be sort of like travel related. And I did wanna mention that I put up on my blog um, a blog post about some travel essentials. And I'll mention a couple of the things that are in the blog post, but there's more on that blog post if you wanna check that out. So uh, a link to my blog is always down below in my description box and definitely subscribe to my newsletter, which will tell you when I have a new blog post up. But sometimes I just send out a newsletter. Sometimes I just feel like, you know, I don't have enough for an entire blog post and it's just something I want to communicate to you guys or whatever. So anyway, definitely subscribe to my newsletter. It's it's just a, another way to keep in touch. But I'm trying to think like where to start because, you know, usually I'm pretty organized with my favorites, but I just have a lot of kind of uh, random things to talk about. Um, I guess I'll talk about some of the travel stuff and I'm going to start with something. This is actually an interesting product because this is, uh, I would say, one of my favorite travel products, but I forgot to bring it on this past trip and I realized how much... I love this because every morning when I was getting ready or if I just needed kind of like a close up look at myself, um, as we know, hotel mirrors and lighting, not always the best. And uh, I would say in the three places that I stayed, all fantastic rooms, all incredible accommodations. The lighting in the bathroom was, it was that strange track lighting. So it was either too like right in your face and you couldn't see anything or you'd move out of it and then you were in the dark. So anyway, I was like, I cannot believe I didn't pack my Elios um, compact mirror. And I call it their travel mirror. I think they call it their compact mirror, but essentially it just opens up like so. And there is, a button and a light there. Hello. And this is a magnifier. It is, you, you do have to turn it off. I always forget and I close this thinking like closing it is gonna turn off the light. It doesn't, you do have to press that button again. But it is rechargeable. Here's where the plug goes in. It's just, it's very compact, but it is a great, great size. You can stand it up like this. It's just perfect for travel and I was kicking myself for forgetting this. And when I got home, I thought to myself, I need to move this mirror to, like I keep it basically with like my beauty products, but I need to keep this basically like with my packing cubes or my space saver bags or whatever. And then I will never forget this again. But I plan on bringing this on every trip that I take from now on because I had taken it on trips. It was very, very handy. And I really, really missed it on this trip that I took. So. Anyway, that's the Elios uh, compact mirror, travel mirror. This is also the same company um, that makes a mirror that I use uh, when I'm filming. It's got like a great ring light. It's, it's like the perfect mirror. I absolutely love it. And if you're a content creator, it's even better because you can put um, like your iPhone in there or whatever. Anyway, you can look it up online, but, and I've mentioned it before in my favorites, um, but I love the Elios products. So, so good. So a couple of other favorites that popped up while I traveled, um, they're upstairs. <laughs> so let's get on upstairs and I'll show them to you. So I packed this jacket for my trip. This is the Everlane Renew Mid-Length Quilted Jacket. I think that's the full name. I have it in the color black, obviously, and I do have it in the size large. So I will uh, model it for you, but let me just talk about it for one second. So uh, my trip was to two cities and then to uh, basically like the countryside in Finland. And for Finland, I had packed a very heavy, warm, windproof, waterproof jacket from the North Face. And I was like, okay, well, I need a different jacket, one that isn't quite so heavy and so, uh, I don't know, sporty looking for the time that I'm spending in Paris and Copenhagen. So I just, I really hemmed and hawed. I thought, oh, do I bring like my wool overcoat? Uh, do I bring uh, a different kind of like puffer jacket that looks a little bit 
uh, a little bit more urban, a little bit less, you know, outdoorsy. I just was like hemming and hawing and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna be layering, I'm gonna have like a sweater on, I'm gonna have a scarf, a hat, all that kind of stuff. And so I didn't want a jacket that was too, too heavy. Uh, at least with my experience in these walking cities, uh, you want a layer, you don't want anything too heavy. And I decided to bring this along. Now, I wanna say that this was kind of a gamble for the end of January because it is, it appears to be very light. I will say, right? It's like a very, um, it's padded, but it's very lightly padded um, and it's just quilted and it's made of like a nylon type of material. And I thought, well, it's fine. If anything, I'll just wear my North Face jacket. Like if I have to, right, it's fine. This was like the MVP of my trip because this was the absolute perfect weight, style, um, you know, we went to a lot of fancy restaurants and while I, I'm not going to go so far as to say that this coat is formal or fancy in any way, but I didn't feel, I didn't feel like completely out of place or sloppy or whatever. And you know, and you take your coat off as soon as you walk in or whatever, but it was just perfect. It was perfect for walking around. It, it, you know, it's not windproof or waterproof, but because of this nylon type of material, it did help with the wind. The pockets are great. Actually, let me go ahead and, and put it on and show you. Okay, so it does button front. It's a like a snap front. And the pockets, they're great because you've got pockets this way and then you have pockets this way. So I was keeping my phone in here and keeping my hands in here. Now, I generally had like my phone in my hand, but just like if I walked into a store and I needed both of my hands to go through a, you know, a clothing rack or something, I would just slip my phone right in here. It's just really, really handy. And I liked this sort of like dual option. It's just a really smart like pocket design. I really love it. It's the perfect length. So this is the mid thigh length. They do have a longer length, which I do have. Um, I did bring that to Paris last year and I really enjoyed it, but there's something about the longer length I mean, not that I even thought about it when I was wearing it in Paris last year. It's just not, I don't know. I like this length for walking. It just seemed a little bit easier and it was more fluid. And also just to kind of give you reference, it was above freezing in Paris and Copenhagen while we were there. It was very windy. It was kind of wet in both places, but it was around, you know, it was around 40 degrees, I'll say. And it was always like, it felt like around freezing. It was like 40 would feel like 32. And I would wear this with a scarf, sometimes with a hat, sometimes without, and gloves or mittens or whatever. And it was perfect, absolutely perfect. As you guys know, when you're walking around a city, you're walking around outside and then you're going inside um, and out and in. And so you kind of need something that's very versatile. Of course, you can always take off your jacket, but usually, you know, you walk in and you just wanna like, you just want it to be easy. And so it was really, really great. There were a few occasions where I started to overheat. I think that was more the store than this jacket. But this jacket, it's just so versatile. And I just feel like it just works for most occasions. It's a very smart looking jacket. So I think it just works. And I was just, I was so impressed with how perfectly it worked in Paris and in Copenhagen that I didn't feel too cold. I didn't get too overheated um, unless the store was like super hot like in Paris and it's lightweight. Um, that was another reason why I decided against bringing any like, you know, wool or cashmere type overcoat. Those coats tend to be a little bit heavier. They're also a little bit harder to pack. Like I didn't actually have to pack this, but this is the kind of clothing that you can just kind of like scrunch and roll up and like squish down and it's totally fine. It's not going to like damage it. It's not going to make it too like wrinkly or whatever. And that to me is like the best type of travel clothing. Stuff that like pops out of your luggage and is ready to wear and is lightweight. So I love this jacket. It, it really ended up being like the MVP of this past trip. And I think with spring coming, this is gonna be perfect, you know? I have like a sweater on today. Obviously it's still pretty chilly here in Vegas, but come spring, I'll just have like a shirt underneath and this is the perfect like outer layer. Just open it up and it's, yeah, it's just perfect. Anyway, I love these liner coats. <laughs> Maybe I'll try like the brown medium. I'm pretty sure they have a brown. Anyway, I'll link to it down below if you're interested. I'll link to everything down below if you're interested. Um, but yeah, I just, I love this jacket. So another MVP uh, from this trip uh, I was actually really surprised about. This is the T3 Fit 
hair dryer. This is a travel size, nice and compact. Very simple operations here. It just has uh, fan speed, heat level, and then a cold blast. That's it. When you put this on the highest heat and the highest fan, it, it was intense. It was just as powerful as any like regular sized hair dryer that I've used from T3. It was so, so good. And because the weather was on the cooler side, I really wanted to make sure that my hair was dry before going out. <laughs> It's like I had my mother's voice in my head, like, don't go out with wet hair. So I was like, okay, let me, you know, make sure my hair is dry before I go out. It was windy, you know, it was kind of rainy, all that kind of stuff. So I was impressed. I was blown away at how powerful this little hair dryer was. And, you know, when I was packing, I decided to pack this and someone commented, don't bother bringing that hair dryer because it's just going to blow out all the fuses in Europe. And I've definitely heard that happening. And I thought, well, let me try it. So at least I can report back to you guys. It did not blow out any fuses in any of the places that I stayed in Paris, not even in Finland where I was like out in the boonies, not in Copenhagen. It, it was fine. It was totally fine. It didn't even do the weird um, clicky thing, you know, where it kind of uh, protects the fuse. Um, it didn't do that at all. So I did not personally run across that uh, problem. So anyway, I just wanted to mention that someone did bring that up. I do think that that is definitely an issue, especially in Europe older places or whatever, but I did not personally come across that problem, did not have that issue. So I highly recommend if you're looking for like a travel hair dryer, this one is fantastic. It is so, so good. Okay. That's it for travel stuff. I'm not going to go on and on about all the things that I loved <laughs> that I packed, but I do mention again, I do mention a few more things on my blog post. So definitely check that out, but let's head on downstairs and talk about some beauty favorites. Okay. Like I said, this is going to be a really interesting favorites because I spent so much of my recent past uh, traveling and I did not bring that much makeup with me. Uh, I do have a few things from that trip that I do want to mention because they were amazing. They were kind of lifesavers anyway, but there are a few um, releases that came out over the past month or so that really, really have impressed me. So I did want to mention those. The first one being this Prada foundation. This foundation wore beautifully, beautifully. I was not sure when I first put it on, I was like, okay looks good. It has a nice uh, kind of thin texture. It has a lot of skincare ingredients in there. Um, I think I mentioned when I tried this for the first time with you guys on camera, um, it felt like it took a little bit longer to set down. And I figured, well, that's probably because of all the skincare. It takes a little bit longer to kind of, you know, soak in, settle down, set down. Um, but once it's set down, it is impeccable. My skin looked better and better as the day went on. Um, you could really feel that there were skincare ingredients in there. My skin really felt nourished. And by the end of the day, I do want to say that my skin looked a little bit more glowy than it did when I first put it on because this does have like a soft matte sort of finish to it. So when I first put it on and it did set down, I was like, okay, this is a little bit on the more kind of like natural skin matter side than I prefer. I have very dry skin. I tend to like glowier foundations. Like, you know, when you put on like your nighttime skincare and like, you know, by the time you're done, you look like just so greasy, but once it settles down, your skin just looks like it's glowing. It looks like plumper. It looks like it just had a drink of water. That's what my skin looked like after putting on this foundation after a couple of hours. And it just had that kind of glowy look. It wasn't like, you know, when you put makeup on and your natural oils just start to break through and you just start to look a little bit oilier as the day goes on, a little bit glowier as the day goes on. My skin actually looked just healthier as the day went on. I was shocked. I was so surprised. You know, Prada is a fashion brand and I thought, okay, they're dipping their toe back into beauty. Uh, they've never done makeup before as far as I can remember. And I thought, is this a cash grab? You know, I, I have my skeptical hat on, but this is some good stuff. I really, really enjoy this foundation. I did not bring this on the trip with me, but I do plan on using this a lot more now that I'm home. So anyway, I did want to mention that gorgeous, gorgeous foundation. Uh, my favorite eyeshadows of, sorry, I'm digging through my bag here. My favorite eyeshadows of past several weeks has been the Chanel Eclat de Nuit. This quad, stunning, 
gorgeous. I love it. Um, it has different finishes. You can wear it uh, very daytime by focusing on the lighter shades. You can add in that deeper shade for a smokier look. The bottom, the shade right here, the bottom right hand shade has a lot of uh, glitter and fun to it. And that just makes for like a great evening shade as well. You can pair these two together for like a fun, smoky evening look. These two for just sort of like a daytime look. So for only having four shades, I do find this quad to be very versatile. Um, and I just love this color story. I just think it's absolutely perfect. I just think it works for so many different occasions. Very versatile, just really gorgeous. I love how neutral it is. It's just stunning. The other very neutral uh, palette that I've been loving is the Natasha Denona My Mini Dream Palette. And today I just have this, am I pointing at the right one? No, this one. I just have this matte shade on. I'm not sure what's going on with me. You guys know I love a one and done eyeshadow look. Always have, always will. You could chalk it up to laziness. You could chalk it up to the fact that I'm not a makeup artist and like just putting on more than one color. I feel like it's always a little nerve wracking. <laughs> But I love a one and done eyeshadow, right? There's just, just nothing easier and sometimes it, it looks the best. Um, but I've always, always, because of that, I've always really liked um, more shimmery shades, satin finish shades, because if you're only gonna use one eyeshadow, then it's great. It always has enough interest in my book, in my humble opinion, it has enough interest in the finish alone to kind of carry off the like one shade. I don't know what's going on, but I'm really liking a more matte, one shadow look. So I've just been using this shade and it's a little bit dark. Doesn't it look a little bit darker on my lid than it does in the pan? I don't know if it oxidizes or just deepens up a little bit, but I am fine using this. I tried using just this. This one's a little bit deep for me. It's a little bit more of a dramatic look. I feel like I can use this to um, add a little bit of dimension if I want, but if I just go in with this shade, it's great. The other shades in here are gorgeous. Very Natasha Denona, uh, beautiful metallics. This deep shade is great for um, liner if you want. And speaking of, in the Chanel quad, I will just use this shade all over my lid. This has like a very, very soft matte appearance. Um, this one has a little bit, you can probably see it actually, it has a little bit more of like a satin finish to it, but I'll use this as a one and done shade as well. But I'm just, I'm loving the more subtle kind of eye look, you know, nothing too glittery, micro glittery or whatever. I just like adding like a little bit of dimension up there. It's like enough for me these days. So I've been loving those two eyeshadow palettes. In terms of cheeks, you guys know I love, I love a good cream cheek product. And I brought my Westman Atelier Petal uh, Baby Cheeks Blush Stick on my trip. That was just like a known entity for me. I knew that it was gonna go with any sort of other makeup that I decided to bring along. It's a very neutral color. It blends out beautifully, all the things, right? So I just decided to pack that. But one cream cheek product that I've been playing around with, I have really fallen for. It's from Violette FR, it's their Bisou blush. So there are three different shades, I believe. At least I have three shades of this Bisou blush. I think those are all the shades. Anyway, the shade that I've been using the most, here it is, is called Louise. And they do have this like marbled effect in there. It's so pretty, but there is, Louise, and then this shade, sorry, the writing is so small, I can't read it right now, but this is another shade. This is like a berry, a deeper berry shade. Gorgeous, really beautiful. And then this shade I really love, I think it's Inez, I think is the name, but look at this bright pink. This is gonna be so perfect for the spring summertime. So that cool, bright bubblegum pink, but not too cool where like a little bit of purple starts to show through. It's just a really nice solid pink. Anyway, I've been using uh, the Louise shade the most. It's the most neutral and it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It goes on really beautifully. Um, I love the little marbled appearance that it has. I don't think that actually makes uh, you know any difference in its performance or anything like that, but it just looks really, really cool. And it's very uh, smooth. It blends out really beautifully. It's really, really gorgeous. And I do have Louise on today. I think I forgot to mention that. I do have Louise on today. I also have some other stuff over it, but that's like the rouge color that you see on my cheeks is Louise. So I've been really loving these on top of the Westman Atelier Baby Cheeks uh, blush stick. And then 
I have been really, really enjoying the Suku gel eyeliners. I brought the uh, dark brown shade along with me on my trip and it's just great. Let me try and like articulate what exactly it is because it's an eyeliner. Eyeliner to me is so essential for a makeup look, but also probably the most boring, <laughs> boring makeup product out there. It's like just an eyeliner I, and not even like a liquid eyeliner, like just a pencil style eyeliner. Um, so let me try and figure out how to articulate what it is that I love about this uh, pencil so much. It has a really microfine tip really, really microfine. And I have started to not even line over my lash line. I just line underneath my lash line, like tight line basically. And then I'll try and get like right in between my lashes. So like right at the base of my lashes. That to me is what helps really accentuate my eyes the most. Once I start like lining over my eyes, sometimes I feel like it starts to look a little bit too heavy. It starts to do what I, don't want the eyeliner to do, which is like kind of close up my eyes. I really want eyeliner to like open up my eyes. Anyway, so that's what I've been doing is basically focusing underneath my lash line. And this really fine micro tip has been great. The formula is amazing. So it's a gel eyeliner. And I feel like a lot of eyeliners that have been created over the past couple of years, these gel eyeliners, they're so soft. They're so slick, like you barely have to touch them to your lid and you have this like really dark line. I mean, I think those are great because the last thing we wanna do is like irritate that part of our eyes or whatever. But I do think there are some that I've gotten carried away. Like they're so soft, they're like almost too soft. I feel like um, they go on and they're almost kind of wet feeling. Anyway, this has more of a solid kind of formula to it. It's just a little bit um, like, you know, it's still a gel eyeliner, so when you put it on, you get like a nice dark uh, mark. Um, but I don't feel like it's super duper soft and that, and that it's gonna be messy in some way. It's just really precise. And the formula just really kind of, because there's a little bit more to it, it really feels like it just sort of like, like it hugs your skin. I don't, it's like I've never used these words to describe eyeliner before, but that's how I feel about this particular formula. Yeah, I just love everything about this eyeliner. I love how fine it is. I love the formula. The dark brown is so dark that I feel like it should really be called like soft black, but that's the dark brown. It's just great. It's just great. I mean, it's so great that I had to take it on my trip with me. So anyway, love the Suku gel eyeliner. I don't believe, like so many of the products are limited edition. They come in and out of stock a lot. Um, you can purchase these off of Selfridges if you know, you're here in the States or in the UK, obviously, and I do think they ship to the EU or whatever. But Suku is very hard to get for Americans, but Selfridges is the one place that you can get it. And I don't think, I think this is like a, a staple in their collection. I don't think that these are limited edition, but they may be out of stock. In fact, the last time I checked, they may have been out of stock. But anyway, I'll link to them down below and hopefully they're in stock. And if not, just keep an eye on it. And maybe um, if you follow me on Instagram, I usually post on my stories, like when things come back into stock or whatever, especially my favorites. So keep an eye out there for sure. Anyway, enough about, enough about eyeliner. Again, is that not the most boring thing ever? Okay, for lips, I have quite a few lip products. The first one is what I actually am wearing <laughs> today. This is the, let me get the full name, the Louboutin Rouge Stiletto Glossy Shine Lipstick. And the shade that I have it in, I actually have to look because it's, too small on the packaging. The shade that I have is, I believe this is Bear Kate. Yes, this is Bear Kate. Wow, that took me a long time to make out. It has like some writing along the barrel here. It's so hard to read. Anyway, um, so this shade is Bear Kate. I, I mean, the shade is great, right? It's wonderful, it's beautiful, it's a nice neutral, it's a light nude, wonderful. It's the formula, and there's something about the Louboutin lipstick formulas that I really, really, really enjoy. So this is like a, like a gloss in stick form, and usually I find, like the YSL ones, just a very soft, very moisturizing kind of formula, great. But they're much like the Suku eyeliner, this has like um, a, a glossiness to it, but there's like a hug and a grip to it and it just, it just doesn't feel like it's gonna be too messy. It's not too soft, but it is really, really 
gloss and it feels soft when it goes on, but it's a really like special kind of formula that I, I just, I really, really enjoy. It just, it stays put, but it really does feel and look kind of like a gloss on your lips. And I would have brought this on my trip, but I think this just would have been a bad call. If it was in my carry-on, <laughs> I would have gotten pulled over. If this was in my check-in, they probably would have, you know, open up my bags every single time. Anyway, um, but I really love the formula. Again, the color is great. I love the color, but it's the formula. It's very glossy, it's very juicy, but there's a hug to it. It's not too loose of a formula. Now, the product that I did bring with me on my trip is the Summer Fridays Dream Lip Oil, and I did bring it in the shade uh, Blush Dreams. And the other shade that I enjoy is Soft Mauve. Wow, I'm surprised I could read that. Soft Mauve. So here's Soft Mauve. Here is Blush Dreams. Blush Dreams just gave my lips just a little bit more of a, a perk, <laughs> if you will. And since this was the only thing I was bringing basically lip-wise on my trip, I was like, let me, let me bring something with a little bit of color. And you can see how much I used it because it's getting empty there. Definitely getting empty there. I, this was perfect, absolutely perfect for walking around in cold, windy, blustery kind of weather. This was incredible. It really, really helped uh, keep my lips, you know, nourished and not chat. My lips didn't get chapped the entire time I was there. I was surprised. So it was really, really healing and it felt really great. And I really love this shade. It's really pretty. Let me just do a swatch for you. And it's one of those like glossy kind of products that has like enough pigment so that you can see the difference on your lips. Like it's not just pigment for show. <laughs> you know those lip glosses that have all of these like different tints to them, but like you put them on your lip and it's all kind of the same. No, you can actually see a little, like it makes a difference. It makes a difference. And like I said, it really like perked up my lips. And I'm so glad that I went with this product for this trip because like I said, it really helped my lips stay like nourished. All right guys, that is it for my favorites this month. I hope you enjoyed this sort of um, vlog style around the house favorites. Again, I will link to everything down below in my description box if you're interested in more information on the products. And subscribe down below if you haven't already. I'll see you in my next video.